if you walk in thinking that information is information inherently serves truth, that I think is the disconnect. Information doesn't inherently serve truth. Information can be used to be, and he actually talks about a dichotomy. Information can serve truth or it can serve order. And order doesn't necessarily need to be based on truth. And I say this in, in the context of, I and mean, this is without like religious commentary, but just like the, the Bible creates order in terms of amongst its the people who adhere to it and, and follow it, regardless of whether or not everything in it is true. And so that's, there's information in this book. And you know, he talks about the Bible as, as a big innovation in terms of, which we can, we, we can touch on later, but the idea that that information can it, it is the Bible helpful for from a physics standpoint on understanding how the earth came into being? Many would say no, but the idea that it allow it that it gives people something to believe in and follow it follow and allows people to bind together with other people that believe it serves other purposes, you know. So if we're looking at it only as each statement, each paragraph, how how much of this information is truth that can be verified either scientifically or this and that with documented history, then you're missing the point of the whole book. You know, the book isn't necessarily the, the purpose of that book isn't necessarily to establish some factual record, some truth. It's to it's information that can be used to create order information that can be used to build community. You know, and so the idea once you expand out your understanding of the idea of information can serve a lot of different purposes. And truth is just one of them. But to every to, to many people, truth isn't even the most important thing information is for. You know, the, the most important thing it, it could be for is for it could be for order. It could be for, again, yeah. community. It could be for uh, creating ties between different people. And so I think that piece about it. Once you can become comfortable with the idea that information, then you can look back throughout history, you can look at, at modern times and say, OK, I can see how information in this instance is not being used to find tr- to, 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 to serve truth. It's being used to 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 gather power. It's being used to divide people. It's being used to a lot of different reasons other than truth and finding truth. And, and I'm, in, I'm an attorney. So th- this was something that was drawing to me because a lot of times with the law, what we think of. Is is this what he calls what Harari calls this naive view where, hey, let's just get the information out there and then we'll have 12 people sit on a jury and decide, OK, based on this information, here's what we got. Or, you know, have have nine people sit on a jury and then and, and OK, based on this information, we're going to we're going to elucidate the truth. And it's like, well, you know, ha- what information do we have? You know, like yeah. is that information what this information uh, actually doing? Well, I think that comes back to I me. Mean, look, I'm not an attorney. So being on the outside of your profession, I've always heard that, right, it's not about who really has the best, who's really truthful or has the most facts in an argument in trial, for example. It's who 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 presents the best argument, right? And so and so, yeah. I think that, that goes into part and of it. And that right? a lot that, of time is narrative. You know, like, correct. That's what I mean. Like that becomes the truth for the jury. Just the, the better argument, the better narrative, that, that, that who can tell the better story, you know? And so, and I think... At least, and I don't want to project on anyone else, but I'll say for someone like me, that that I, I'm 46 years old. I kind of just in these recent years of all this kind of reading this stuff, I finally it's finally clicked in my head that that is actually how we work as humans. It's it's it is irrational um, because what is truth in a sense? Um, and I like how um, in the part of information. I just want to read this part while we're on the information because he slowed it down and says that. Um, information, I'll quote the book, information doesn't necessarily inform us about things, rather it puts things in formation. <laughs> and yeah, I just kind of like yeah, the way you yeah. said that, because I was, that was like, excellent. I ne- yeah, yeah excellent I never thought about breaking word. apart, yeah, breaking in apart the word information, but yeah, it does put things in formation. And so then he things, goes on. But also it puts things and people in formation. You yes, know, like, yeah. but, but yeah. that's why I never thought of the ability to think of trans, uh, information and translate it this way. But things like he said, if you look at, and you've always said this, some people can look at the stars and they just see stars. Other people looked in self constellations. Yeah. Well, now we can say that's someone putting things in formation when they look in the sky. Um, yeah. He, he referenced- even, Taking that even beyond, some people yeah. then can look at those stars, same, same stars and see astrology and say, okay, here's what's yeah, going to yeah. happen to you based on your birthday. And so all of that is information that is not necessarily serving truth. It's serving. But a here's the it's thing that, um, yeah, and, and the one that got me to appreciate it, and, and you know, this might resonate with you, was music. I never thought of this, and it's true. He says music is a form of information, 
And then he kind of alludes to the idea, is music right or wrong? And that's a good point, right? Like, like good music versus bad music, very subjective. And so if you were saying music as information, well, is it truthful or not? You know what I mean? That's how you get into well, this, but that, this, and that's this murky the area. Is yeah. that it's not even music isn't even trying to serve truth. Like it's Correct. not yeah. it's, it's information. information. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, but that's the point is to break apart this assumption that a lot of us come in with that information leads to is information is this path. You know, you get all this information and you're you're on the right way to truth. Or if there's there's untruth out there, if there's false stuff out there, you just need that throw information in. And that'll yeah. that'll quench, you know, the, the 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 false stuff. And it's just that's just not necessarily the way it works. Like the way that truth happens is by deliberate effort with information as far as what information is out there and then the vetting of information, which, again, we, that, that's a part of the book as well. We may not get into that part, but I do want to there, there was and I don't want to spend too much time here, but yeah. he gave examples of how information networks can go wrong. And some of those, you know, some of these things are some of the most infamous things in history, you know, in terms of, you know, like the kind of the witch burning phase that they went through in Europe. Um, and I hate to sum it up like that, but I mean, because it's it's a it's terrible. It's terrifying stuff. But even also like kind of Nazism or Stalinism and how information networks were created there to murder millions of people, you know. And so were there any of these things that stood out to you in terms of just examples? I mean, and again, yeah. all of this no, is being provided in the context of pointing, of looking f to, in order for us to look forward and say, okay, what's going to happen with our information networks now that in addition to humans creating information, distributing information, curating information, you have AI doing it. So again, let's look back at how this stuff has gone wrong in the past. So in terms of any of the things that have gone wrong in the past, did, were any of those particularly significant to you or, or what stood out in that? Yeah. No, again, they, they all were. It's, it's fascinating. So um, another quote, truth may be essential for the scientific method, but may not, but, but may not motivate a nation. And again, yeah. it, it goes back to, so I'll say this, because you're right about the Stalinism, Nazism, all these isms. It's a, it is really all about ideas and, and, and what is the truth of that society or that nation. And so, and, that, and that's an interesting kind of dissonance there, right? Scientific, the scientific method requires actual, like, finding out facts and actually requires one to but, acknowledge, oh, give me a second, one to acknowledge yeah. ignorance. That's interesting. That's, you know I mean? but, but see, yeah. scientific method is a discipline. That's what, that's the structure yeah. that's put on to the information gathering and the information vetting. The, the scientific method isn't information. It's saying, here's how we want to handle information. And so that's where you, you have this pursuit of truth. Like you said, the, the, the recognition of ignorance, the introduction yeah. of self-correcting mechanisms. So people are rewarded for pointing out deficiencies as opposed to being shunned for pointing out this deficiencies in the, in the current information. And so, yeah, like that's a good point to bring up in terms of the scientific method is a discipline. You know, a jury trial is a discipline. A constitutional republic is a discipline that is trying to take all of this information that may float out there and introduce things that will allow you to get closer to truth and justice or whatever other objectives you may have.